makes the Through my activism in the United States, I kind of discovered where my ends were, how far I could get with it. And I came to some conclusions that I need to be involved in food, nutrition, fuel, pretty much the things that we need to get through a day in a city or a town, civilization. But I saw it as a very urgent thing to do. The deeper I got into government and politics, the more I decided that I had no time to waste. I strive for unity, not uniformity. So I'm trying to find people of all walks of life that do what they do best. So we have from newborns to 75 year olds as tribe members here, and they're all here for their own reasons. Uh, again, I like to, I just like to enable people to do their best. So from artists to builders to chefs to yoga instructors, it doesn't really matter to me as long as people wanna, wanna flow. We're all involved in some community. Even if you live in a little flat in the middle of a town and you think you're kind of alone, you're still surrounded by hundreds of people on an acre or even a block. So we are involved in a community. We probably aren't connecting with them enough. So let's get local. And when you eat local, I think you'll find a connection with your food that's gonna brighten your day in a thousand ways. People that go to farmer's markets have uh, ten times more conversation than people that go to Walmart. Okay, They have conversations with their neighbors, they have conversations with their farmers, they talk about, oh, these eggs came from your chickens today? Oh, yes. There's interaction. And in interaction is where our power comes. Our, our unity comes when we communicate. And going to supermarkets and ringing yourself out with your own credit card, and I mean, we don't even have to talk to humans. Uh, it's, it's so disconnected from three and a half, four million years of human evolution we've already experienced to, to jump into supermarket lines, I mean. Each massive tree that you've maybe seen recently, imagine you've walked by recently, there's a hundred, two hundred thousand liters of water in every tree. It's a bank of water. And these mountains are bare in places. So one of the actions we took right off the bat was getting into reforestation. So we started buying trees from every school we could get them from, every high school, every elementary school, where they have little greenhouses full of trees from the local seeds. So we've been involved in a massive tree planting uh, project. One of them is called the Zona, uh, the Corridor Biológico de los Pasalapas. It's a biological corridor between the National Park of Carrara and Congreja. And it's so the animals have a continuous forest to, to we'll go through. And so using a tree like the Hetrofa, uh, it's helping us retain water in the hills. It's helping us percolate water back into the aquifers, which is helping springs stay active year-round. Drinking water is available for people. Animals exist again in creeks that were dried when I got here. Just creeks right here that would dry up uh, by January before are still flowing now at the end of the dry season. So at the end of the production cycle, if at the end of 50, 60 years of this tree, we're gonna have a forest grown back through it. So we're using this as a pioneer species to rebuild jungle. And there's plenty of jungle that needs it. Well, baked earth or unbaked earth homes, like the cob and wattle and daub we do, uh, that is probably one of the most popular ways to make homes in the world. It's just not from our cultures. And 
So a lot of the world is building out of these already. 85% of the homes in the world aren't made out of wood. And you wouldn't know that if you grew up where I grew up. Progress for me now would be learning how to come into balance. And not everybody has to move to a farm in the middle of the jungle, but I think what I've learned here is that anywhere you live, if you decide to start working with your community, you'll find that there's CSAs within an hour of wherever you live, where you buy a share of a farm at the beginning of the year and you get, a, you get access to the food every week. This is blowing up in the United States. There's over 8,000 farmers markets now. 15 years ago there were under a thousand of consequence, so it's, the food revolution is on. And these things aren't that hard. It's just we're not practiced. It's just lost arts in our communities. So let's get back into the arts of food, the art of local energy. We need to work for the positive change that needs to come. And once you try and work for that, I think you'll find the challenges and the rewards.